It is very windy today, so I think we are going to struggle getting some shots in with the air guns. Um, so maybe we'll leave the air gun stuff for tomorrow. Um, maybe we'll focus today on the 22 to 50. Uh, take it out to do some ground squirrel hunting, maybe, because um, that's something we really struggled with last time in the in the strong wind with the air gun. So we'll get the 22 to 50 out, do some vomiting, ground squirrel vomiting today, and then hopefully tomorrow, if the wind calms down we can take the air guns out and maybe shoot some dassies. They've got a permit here to shoot dassies all year round. So we'll take the, the air guns out, maybe find some rocky areas and look for some dassies, get some cool shots on the scope cam. But for now, it's the 22-250 and the ground scrolls. Let's go do it. just um, come out into this field and it's very windy so we're not going to take the air, air guns out right now I think it would be kind of silly to take the air guns out now in this wind we wouldn't hit anything um, but uh, we've got the 22 to 50 out which for varminting stuff like this is absolutely perfect it's not very expensive to, to shoot a lot um, and it's I mean it's shooting 3,000 3,600 feet per second so those those bullets are getting there immediately we don't even have to hold for wind within 100 meters or so so um, I won't show you what the ground squirrels look like because I think YouTube will probably flag the video and will get taken down. I'll probably make a, uh, like an unlisted version of this video and I'll put all that stuff in. But um, let's just say they, um, there's not much left of them. <laughs> but let's keep going, see if we can get some more. Yeah. So it's vomiting today and uh, more specifically we are going after the ground squirrels and um, there are a problem here in the fields um, they not only dig a lot of holes so the sheep that are behind us here the small lambs that have just been uh, given birth to they're in danger of actually falling to the holes and injuring themselves um, but it's more than that the ground squirrels they eat a lot of the, the, gr the grass here and you can see the patches where they eat and the patches where they, they urinate it's very damaged the grass doesn't grow so they are a problem, they are pest animals and we do like to shoot them. And in the past we've come out here with the air guns and shot them, but um, we really struggled last time with the air guns. In this wind, um, the wind's picking up even more now and I think it's just gonna get worse in the afternoon. The wind makes things very difficult. So even though with long distance shots, you can take, maybe have some time to range the animal, take a shot, it all happens very quickly and to estimate the wind correctly is a real struggle. So today we've, we haven't even taken the air guns out yet. Hopefully we get a chance uh, perhaps on another day, maybe early in the morning when there's no wind. But we've chosen the, the 22 to 50. And this thing was purpose built for varminting. This caliber is actually known as the 22 varminter. It was introduced a very long time ago, but it's, it's just become more and more popular. Um, very small 50 grain bullet that we're using, Hornady VMAX, traveling at 3,600 feet per second. Um, it really does a really good job. You don't have to worry about holding off for the wind within 100 to 150 meters. You just aim dead on and anywhere on the body. You just have to get a small piece of it and it's a very humane kill. So um, another thing we like about these very light, very fast varminting bullets is at the moment they hit anything, whether it be grass, whether it be ground or even the, the ground squirrels themselves, the moment they hit something they fragment into such small pieces that they, they don't have enough energy to carry on. So when you're shooting stuff in fields where we've got a lot of livestock, you need to be very careful about what's behind it. Um, the 260s out here, I don't think it would be smart to, to do any vomiting with the 260s. Um, you know, it would be expensive as well, but from a safety point of view, it's much safer to use something small and light like a, a, a Hornady VMAX, which probably is even safer to use than a very heavy pellet, actually, because the pellets can actually ricochet. So um, that's doing a really good job, and I think we're just going to keep at it and see what else we can get. Let's keep going. If he stops, just aim right on him. 
Nice. Left to him. <laughs> Perfect. One shot down. Well done, Hunter. Thanks. <laughs> In the head. In the head. It's a nice gun, eh? Yeah. <laughs> With the sun starting to beat down on us, we head back to the farmhouse, but the shooting certainly doesn't stop. We find a shady spot, we look for some rocks about 700 meters away, and we make the most of the wind, practicing our wind calls and seeing just how close we can get. Anton hasn't done much long range shooting, so Luke gives him a crash course and lets him take a few shots with his 260. Eventually the clouds move in again and the temperature drops to a more survivable level. So we head out once again for an evening shooting session, this time to shoot a dassy to give to the farm workers for dinner. These hills and valleys are full up with dassies. They inhabit any rock structures they can find and so we know it's only a matter of time until we find one. But with the wind as strong as it is, we are still limited to the center fires. The 22 to 50 comes out once again, and this presents us with a unique opportunity to test the scope cam on the back of something other than an air gun. We sit for about 15 minutes just scanning the rocks, and although no dussies appear at first, we do come across a herd of kudu cows moving up the valley and a number of mountain reedbuck, which are very common in this part of the country. We enjoy observing the animals for quite some time, but eventually we spot a dassie about 150 meters away and it's game on. That's one way to shoot a dassie. Um, in the past we've come out here and shot them with air guns and rim fires. Um, but we had an opportunity here in the wind across the valley from about 150, 160 meters. Um, managed to get that shot on the scope cam, which is something you can only do with a small caliber. Um, you know, obviously with air guns and rim fires, but with small caliber center fires like the 22 250. And um, obviously went for the headshot because the 22 250 is such a destructive little cartridge. But here's our dassie. I'll show you the side of his head that isn't blown apart. Um, so, Dassey, also known as a rock hyrax, and all the meat is intact because we shot the head. So, we're going to take this back and we're going to put him in the pot, and he'll definitely be, be eatable. So, that's a great way to end the evening. Well, this is what it's all about. Um, it's such a great feeling to be back at the camp and after a long first day of um, attempted hunting, <laughs> um, we have come back and we're relaxing here by the fire like we always do, but we've come inside, which is something different. A lot of the time we'll be out by the fire um, outside and, and enjoying being outdoors, but um, it's a bit windy outside at the moment and it looks like it could rain at any moment. So we've come inside and it's a real nice change. Um, I've been creative with the, the dinner here. We've got some Nyala steaks, uh, rump steaks and fillets from a Nyala I shot a while back. Um, we've got some gravy over here. We've got some potatoes that we're gonna put out. Luke's got a sweet potato, um, some vegetables. So it's a really interesting dinner. Um, but just to be back here is, is fantastic. So we're making the most of it. We're having a good time uh, with, by candlelight and by firelight. Um, and we're getting some good nutrition and some good rest tonight for tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow brings some good hunting. <laughs>